Hi, I'm Lisa Smith. I'm a research associate here at the Gainesville Lab, and I work with Cowboy. So in the southeast, a lot of biologists have found that we're no longer picking up weasels and spotted skunks on game cameras. So we looked at a historical records in Florida, and we had over 200 records of long-tailed weasels up to year 2000. And since then, we've only had seven records. So we started putting out game cameras to try to find them. We could not get them on cameras. So we had to think outside of the box and find a method that works better and detection dogs are actually more successful at finding scat of rare animals than game cameras and other methods. And Cowboy lives at my house and uh, when we're in the field, uh, Kendall is the handler for Cowboy and I do a lot of the orienteering so we walk transects in the field and I navigate for Kendall and help keep her on track. My name is Kendall Hassler and I'm a detection dog handler working with Cowboy. Today we went and picked up Cowboy from Lisa's house and then we took him out to Noonan's Lake Conservation Area to see if we could find any scat from long-tailed weasels or eastern spotted skunks. When we get to the site, the first thing we do is take weather measurements because the weather can highly affect how well Cowboy can find the scat. Lisa will serve as the orienteer and make sure I stay on the transects that we are following. And then basically my job is to keep the leash out of the way of Cowboy, keep an eye on him and see if he's possibly detecting anything just follow along until he gives an alert and says that he's found something. After Cowboy has alerted on a scat, uh, Lisa will throw him a reward toy. It's the best part of his whole day. He gets to play with his toy and then becomes the hardest part of our day because the scat's very difficult to find. So usually it'll be us on our hands and knees while Cowboy gets to play with his toy. When we find a scat, we collect it and we can make a tentative ID off the size and the shape of the scat. It's like weasel food. But to confirm that it is definitely what we think it is, we send it away to a lab. And while it's there, they can also do a technique called metabarcoding. And that will tell us what the animal's been eating because we know very little about spotted skunks and weasels in Florida, including what habitat they use and what they eat. So that way we can get the most information from what Cowboy finds for us. So a lot of conservation dogs are able to work for a full day, but down in Florida it gets pretty hot, so we have to be careful and monitor Cowboy's body temperature and make sure he's not getting overworked. So we just keep an eye on him, make sure he's not panting too hard, give him regular breaks, he gets lots of water breaks. When we're done with surveys for the day, we take Cowboy back to Lisa's house and he gets a nice brushing to make sure we get any seeds and ticks off of him that are loose in his fur. We also get out any mats that have formed. If he's gotten pretty muddy, he'll get a bath that day. And then he also gets a nice rawhide chew that has enzymes in it to help keep down the the tartar on his teeth because his dental health is important. Cowboy's our most important piece of equipment in this project um, and he's only three years old and most conservation dogs are able to work until they're about eight or nine so we still hopefully have several years that we'll get to work with Cowboy. We'll keep him working as long as he's happy, healthy, and working hard. It's really easy to add more scent onto a detection dog so we can use him for other projects, finding other scats or even finding live animals. And when he finally gets to retire then we'll get to fight over who gets to keep him. <laughs> or have some shared custody agreement, so he'll have a good retirement life.